cowboy. He's not going to be able to slide it around and use it up too much. He wants to make sure he's got plenty left for the last 10 laps. Oh, hard into the wall. Two or three other cars get tangled up behind him. A red car on his side. Two more cars bang oh. into it. The red flag out immediately. One, two, three, four, five, six cars involved. The emergency crew there in a hurry. We will not venture a guess as to what the driver's identification is of the car that took the wild ride until we can get some information from USAC or get a closer shot. Boy, they, those cars really hit hard. He hit that, Paul, that uh, wall tremendously hard. He took a heck of a shot, got upside down, and then a couple of more cars got stopped, stopped up there, and another car, a couple of cars came along and hit them with a tremendous amount of speed. I, that was an awful looking accident. We'll wait once again to find out from USAC who that is. All we can really tell you is it's a red car that uh, the first one, that's Chuck Leary, the 31 car who's sitting there right beside it. He was one of the last cars to come into the fracas. We're being told now it is Ted Hines in the 24 car, the uh, Cliff Jacobs entry. And we're looking at some uh, other cars that uh, were involved in that crash. So the red flag comes out. How many laps do we have complete? Looks Robbie Ott. Robbie Ott in the black 15 car. He is okay. He is the... Uh, engineering student that takes time out of his uh, summer vacation to go racing there is the uh Jans car the 51 Perry ounce he is limping just a bit All right he's limping a little bit looks like uh he hurt his leg or his ankle as he got in there here's the uh, mike fedor check he obviously was uh, involved in some manner down there he was in the uh, yellow 36 car that's the 20 car michael lang mike lang in, in the 20 car and mike is still in the race car he appears to be okay there is chuck leary leary walks away he is okay there's a couple of tremendous shots against the wall in there as that uh, as that accident occurred uh, the first one and then uh, one later on well larry here's a replay he got sideways much the same as Mike Bliss did, except when he turned back, he was already way up on that left side. He just hit a tremendous impact, almost head on, almost got up into that catch fence, bounced back on the racetrack, then flipped a couple of more times. Look at these three more cars all trying to miss the melee up front. They almost, they get stopped up there in the corner, and then two more cars come along as Robbie Otto looks like and uh, Leary get together and bang into each other. Now we're riding with Mike Fedorchek. The in-car camera looked way up ahead because Mike was one of the last ones, I think, to get involved. Perry Yount's right in front of him. The accident's already occurred. Now it looks like perhaps Yount's got out of it and Fedorchek tapped him as they both go to the fence. Yeah, they both went to the fence and they were just, uh, they were sitting up there pretty well stopped. I think Michael Lang is right to the right side of him, just kind of stopped. It doesn't look like he even got into him very hard before uh, a couple more cars came along and banged into them. That was Larry, I think, and uh, Robbie, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, Robbie Ott. Dave, what can you uh, pass along? We saw the view from Mike Fedorchek's car. Mike is okay and uh, has a smile on his face. What did it look like from the driver's eye view as opposed to the onboard camera view? Well, all of a sudden, everybody just uh, backed up to me real quick and uh, just ran into, I believe it was Perry Ounce, and from then the fireworks started. You couldn't see it start? Uh, I could see it start, but I was cooking the car in there pretty fast and really had uh, no way to stop in time. But, man, I'll tell you, these guys out here are just racing their hearts out and clear on back through the pack, and I guess this is just what happens. Glad to see that he is okay. Mike Fedorchek is fine. We'll get an update on the other drivers, and we'll take a quick break and come back with more. Let's go to Gary and Larry. Well, of course, the work continues with Ted Hines. There are those uh, drivers involved in the crash, Larry Hines, Ott, Fedorchek, Lang and uh, Perry Yount, we can tell you there's a fine medical facility right here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. We can also tell you we understand that Dick St. John, who was burned earlier, was transferred on to Methodist Hospital in downtown Indianapolis for treatment of the burns on uh, the legs and his hands. That happened early in the racing program this evening. As you can see, the work continues from the EMTs on Ted Hines, who took a very hard hit against the outside wall. He was really airborne when he hit the wall. We've seen that type of accident happen a couple of times this evening where the cars have gotten over on the left rear. Well, of course, you run the left rear suspension softer than the right rear. Everybody's trying to go as fast as they can. Once you get loose on the right rear and the car bounces over hard on the left rear, it's very hard to control them. Dave, you got another comment? Good news regarding Ted Hines. He is on the stretcher and is going into the ambulance, and they're going to take him over to the medical center and check him out here on the grounds and assess whether he needs to go over to the hospital. He is alert and conscious, 
and seems to think that he's okay, although obviously they don't take the driver's word for that. Perry Younce gave us a thumbs up, but he's got a bruise on his leg that they're going to take a look at. He was hobbling around a little bit. Everyone else has walked away. There are some ill feelings, we understand, and we'll try to follow up on that. But the important news is that the drivers apparently have suffered no serious injuries. And give uh, Cliff Jacobs uh, a slap on the back for building one tremendous race car with a sturdy cage and that's why uh, we understand the uh, report is so good on Ted Hines after that grinding crash over there in turn one so we remain under red with only five laps in the book we'll come back and get them started back live from Indianapolis Raceway Park the scan lift getting our RF equipment way up in the air this evening and hello to you and thanks for your help this racing season from uh, Raceway Park that's Bob Fink giving us a wave we wave back and thank you for your assistance this year I tell you what Larry Rice we have a junkyard out there we have destroyed a lot of equipment this evening well we sure have I, I mean some of these cars have taken a heck of a hit look at that car he hit that wall almost head-on at probably hundred to hundred and ten miles an hour took a heck of a lick this is the one at Fedorchek. Look at that frame. Look how far side that frame is bent over. And that's after he was in the crash, he was sitting there, and these other cars came along. Let's take a look at it here. They're sitting there, dead in the water. They've been sitting there for a couple of cars going by. And look at this. Bang! Those guys hit him probably running 70, 80, 90 miles an hour. Uh, very good uh, shot from our camera guy. Now watch how long Fedorchek sets here after he's involved in the altercation. Now kids are older, whoever you're are if you're watching if you're driving race cars stay strapped in the cockpit until emergency crew guy walks up to you now watch this everything appears to be stopped he could start to climb out right here he doesn't and wow about three seconds later he's nailed again so stay in the cockpit with the belts fastened until the emergency guy walks up and says you okay dave well, just one other observation. We mentioned the tempers flared briefly afterward. That is pretty well cooled off now, but it, I think, follows up on what you were saying, Gary, and that is watch way ahead of you on the racetrack because a couple of the guys were pretty upset that they wanted to make an evasive move but felt that the, the guy next to him wasn't watching where he was going and took away the evasive line. So the other lesson in this is look a long way ahead of you because if there's trouble in front, you're going to get there in a hurry. Looking at the front of Ted Hines' car, that's the car off to the left of this shot here, it's amazing how structurally sound that race car is right now after that shot. Once again, a tribute to the Cliff Jacobs chassis. Well, I, I think so. He took a heck of a shot as he, uh, as he took that thing sideways. It kind of high-sided. It got over in that left rear, got up on two wheels, and bam, went right into the fence. He had no chance to slow that car down at all. It was a tremendous impact. Well, the initial report medically was very good on Ted. He was uh, removed to the uh, medical complex that we have here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. He was alert, conscious, talking, and he'll be checked over at that complex and earlier we had an altercation involving fire which is always scary right there the yellow number 66 dick st john this was the first qualifier as he erupts an engine big time and look at the flames as he's battling one to stop the car and unbuckle all the harness that he can to climb out he bails out over backwards and uh, suffered some burns on the legs and the hand he was transferred from here to methodist hospital in downtown indianapolis for treatment on the burns. Once again, this was earlier this evening in the first of our two qualifying heat races. You can see him batting at the flings because the pants are on fire, the legs are hot. He was suffering burns on the uh, legs.